takes disposable. It's like a disposable camera. It oh, turns amazing. Your phone into a disposable I camera, love that. So you can't actually see it until it develops. Okay. And so she'll just take a photo and not know. And not know. I love that. And and it's cool because it comes in like the when it develops, yeah. it looks like a disposable. Okay. Photo. So it's like a little imperfect. Nice. And she's been loving it. I love because that. Because she just takes because with Austin, like we're constantly like, oh, we need to picture that, picture that. Yeah. Picture that. And you have like a limited role yeah. on your camera for the week. And so she just takes one picture and moves on. That's perfect. And we still get all the photos in the world of Austin, yeah. but we're not like always on our phone. You're not like your whole phone like role, right. like your camera roll yeah. is just all Austin. It's funny, but Delaney's sister, she's like Austin's personal videographer. Oh, that's my like, nephew. Brrr. My whole camera roll is my nephew, <laughs> yeah. right? I find that it's hard for the moms to get photos with their kids. So I do a really disciplined job of like yeah. taking photos of my sister with her kid. And that's Cause she's always the one role. taking photos. Yeah. So. Cause then yeah. you have no pictures with your own kid. Yeah. But then I'm like, <laughs> no, I don't have any photos with Luca. What the heck? This is ridiculous. <laughs> you're so. just the, you're the person behind the scenes. Exactly. The dark night. I'm like, I know. Yes, that's exactly what I am. It's the dark night. That's <laughs> what people call me. That's what, um, now, from now on, when I'm commentating your matches, I'm gonna be like, Sophie Bukovic, the dark night. The dark night. Oh my gosh. I don't know if you saw the my last Instagram night. post. But there's sure. a photo that I like found in one of the in the app from Beach Volleyball World, and it looked like I'm doing like the Spider Man when he like lands on cars and things. Oh yeah! And sorry. so I put like a side by side, and I was like, "This is way too accurate." Like I was literally crying doing it. But anyways, not telling you to call me Spider Man or anything. But well, <laughs> the Dark Knight works. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, if you now want, feel free what's to call the, me Spider Man. What's the female version? What is she? The Madam Web. Widow? Madam Web. Right? The new oh, movie? Like I didn't know. My daughter's obsessed with Spider Man, by the way. I was about to ask, where'd you pull that from? I was like, you're in the. <laughs> I literally was house. driving to preschool this morning and she's like, look, Spider Man, Spider Woman, or whatever. <laughs> oh, I love that. I was like, it's Madam Web. <laughs> <laughs> Get it right. Don't say it. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's the fun thing about this podcast and then translating to the commentary mm -hmm. i'm like well she called herself spider-man i can get down yeah. <laughs> spider-man i don't feel like it's it holds ring. the same if you make your own nickname <laughs> it you know it it sometimes it can the the self-appointed nicknames yeah they fall flat sometimes but sometimes when someone says something like oh i'm just totally gonna let you have that I'll however this spins madam well i'll take get it, it. Well, I'll be however this uh, spins get it <laughs> 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 I'm nice. commentating Doha, so hopefully I'll get my first attempt. Oh, that. sweet. Hopefully we qualify, and then you can get all Me the too. attempts. Yeah. Me too. Let's get yes, a little let's go. qualifier. Yeah. I was actually, before you came in, I told Try, I was like, we're going to be spending a lot of time with Sophie on the road this year. Heck I was yeah. looking at the events that you and Heather are oh, setting up for, and it is all of them. Everything. We have to play in absolutely mm -hmm. everything this year. Now, do you got, like... Because we've been talking about it, because there's 10 events. Beginning in Doha, there's yeah. 10 events in 14 weeks. Yeah. And so at some point... If you do try to play all of them, you're sort of compromising your ability to play well. I think sure. Because like if you go Mexico, Mexico, China, China, Brazil, <laughs> yeah. like you're doing yeah. three totally different I know. hemispheres in three weeks. I know. Yeah. Have you ever like paid attention to like the kind of statistics of like where your game maybe falls off in terms of results? For example, me and Trev were like, if we played four in a row, like yeah. that fourth one, pretty much always fell off as a oh, result yeah. so we yeah. like tried to like stack it up like that totally. not that either of us have the luxury necessarily this <laughs> yeah. year of yeah. taking much off but have you ever noticed anything specific yeah i think definitely last year with starting with heather kind of late and yeah. her having zero points it was yeah. really important for us to be strategic with the tournaments that we right. played and the tournaments we got into so we yeah. really backloaded the back half of the calendar yeah knowing likely we'd get into those events yeah. but we Usually were fortunate smart. to hold um, our first place finish in Halifax, mm -hmm. the Norseka, or sorry, the Futures, because it counts like a Norseka. So it oh, could technically be your like fifth event. Country. Yeah. Okay. So it could technically be your like fifth oh. event that I could hold in my other four. Only because you're the host? Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah. So that's why they're like Come incentivizing on, people to host. <laughs> Put something yeah, on. exactly. That's a good point. That's, so that's actually why a good idea. They want their top teams to play in it, obviously, for yes. promotion and um, for marketing and things so but you can't make it hurt those teams exactly. or else they just can't play yeah. period so it, like it helped us if it helped huh. us and then if it didn't we just stopped counting it oh huh. yeah cool that's yeah. why whenever norway hosted a one star futures in oslo yeah that anders would play with like kind of a young kid yeah and christian would play with someone else his family is also the national team yeah. right <laughs> <laughs> i mean sure. you can just pick a cousin at yeah, that point much. pick a brother pick the a cousin. norway moles it's, it's like so their funny. semifinals were like a mole and someone Another mole and someone, <laughs> another mole and someone else, and Hendrick and someone else. Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> it's like, oh my God, what a God. phenom family. Holy smokes. Yeah. yeah. Wild. Well, it's crazy because I remember Anders and Christian came on 
in 2018. Okay. When they were like just starting to become like the beach volley Vikings, like when they were winning everything. And he said, actually, my younger brother, Marcus, is going to be better than all of us. That's funny because that's what Henrik said when I asked him about Anders. I'd never met Anders or known about him. And I knew Henrik from the Youth World Champs. Yeah. And he spoke about Anders being way better than him. And I was like, you're being humble. Like, this is just like a humble claim. He's like, no, no, my brother's actually super (laughs) sick. He's like, no, I'd love to tell you I'm better than him. And I was like, stop it. You're being humble. Unfortunately. (laughs) You're being humble. Um, But they're all just super incredible. I was like, how does it get better than you, though? Right. Because, like, Henrik's phenomenal. So. And Henrik is also just a beast. He's getting better, too. Yeah. He's been on tour for a while, and he's last year was definitely his best year. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, hey, if they're doing it. God damn it. <laughs> i got to drink some of that Norwegian He's got water. some decent training partners. Yeah. No kidding. That's what I always think about. I guess that's true. When I was talking to Hendrik and just practicing against Anders all the time, he's like, well, if I can side out against Anders's block, I can side out against any block. It's so true. <laughs> it's interesting, though, when like you hear people talk about trying to mimic their game similar to them. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, Ooh, but are you an athletic phenom like him? Yeah. Like, right. are you? Do you see the game the same way Christian does? Like... I think it's important to mimic somebody who you are similar to athletically yeah, and then kind of feed your game based on that. Well, but. especially those guys because they've played together since they were like yeah. 12 or totally. something. I don't know yeah. how young, but like there's like a certain feel to yeah. the game where you, what, what are you guys doing in this situation? Oh, I don't know. I just know that I feel like Anders usually will do exactly. this when he fades this way. I feel his body going that way and I think he's going to leverage them that way. So I just stay still and I pop out here. Yeah. Right. It's like. Good luck learning that yeah. with your new partner that you've yeah. had for a year or two, you yeah. know? Yeah. I mean, I'll tell you that much. The conversations that I have with my partners are not that seamless. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah. <laughs> the, but, with Anders, like you mentioned, I don't think it's a good idea to try to do anything Anders does. No, you can't. Because it's like telling a high school kid, yeah, watch Steph Curry. Yeah. Just pull it from half whenever yeah. you want. It's fine. Sure. Dislocate like your hips, put your ass on the sand, <laughs> right. you know, depending on who you are. Yeah. I mean. <laughs> and then get max power from your butt on the sand. Right. Because you watched the the match, that the friendly that Norway and Poland had. I don't know if you saw it on YouTube. Yeah, yeah that double move. Oh, my God. I put it on my story where Anders is blocking big angle. Oh, like I saw this lateral. on your story. And at the last second, there's no possible way he could have thought yeah. to do this. It was just an instinctual thing. He's just like, and I'll take that. Yep. And, and, like, and Christian's doing? behind him. Yep, just what we worked on. <laughs> I knew exactly what to do. <laughs> He's like, oh, thanks, God. buddy. <laughs> Wild. It was insane. Yeah, yeah, that's when you. That's when you're like, okay, as an offensive player, you're like, I made the right shot there. Right. Yeah. Like, he blocked a full on drop angle and then a full on drop line. Yeah. Mid and, and sealed it. <laughs> yeah. All at the same time. Crazy. Craziness. But, but like you said, you've had a. Uh, some different conversations with your partners because you haven't been playing with Heather since you were a teenager. Right. Um, you've, I was telling Travis, like, Sophie's lived, like, many lives in these last Oh, my years. gosh. You guys just wait for my book to come out, yeah. I swear. <laughs> <laughs> we got your like, ghostwriter. Like, it was, like, me, you, Paletto on the field, yeah. on the, like, the one-star tour in 2021. Yeah. Yep. And then, bam, now all of a sudden you're a defender taking silver yep. at the World Championships. Yep. And then... You're a defender with Pavin. Yep. And then now you're back to blocking with Heather. Yep. And you won a gold medal in your first FIVB back in Halifax. Yep. I know it was a Futures Not World Champs, but to win a tournament is hard. Right. Especially with a new player. Yeah. yeah. And like what feels and like a brand new position right. almost again. Because oh, yeah. I'm like relearning how to block right. on a more senior level. Like I feel like I was a pretty good blocker in my youth age group, but mm-hmm. the reason I became a defender was because I knew that my ceiling blocking wasn't yeah. like it was never going to be the top in the world blocking. Um, so I kind of just realized that for myself and I was like, you know what, I'm going to go into defense. So now being thrown back into blocking at the top level after having so much success in the back, I was yeah. like, oh gosh, this feels very new. It yeah. feels very foreign. I feel like you can attest to moving around a yeah, bunch. Yeah, for sure. Like I I'll- mean, you too. Yeah, really? like you kind I mean, of do. Everything. I just pop around with partners and it's <laughs> like, ah, oh, you look like you're fun to play with. And that's football, cool. Whatever. Yeah, sweet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a tricky thing, especially as we get later into our careers. Like subconsciously, yeah. you feel like you're always things are always going to get easier, and you're yeah. going to get better. You're going to get more in tune with your partners as your career goes on, right? right. But then, like when you have these step backs or like challenges, you're like. Mm-hmm. This isn't how it's supposed to go, yeah. you know, and like it's such a mind <laughs> yeah. f to deal with it and yeah. just be like, 
be where you're at. Totally. And like for me, blocking wise, like I just feel I've always thought and felt like I was elite top world class in terms of what I can do, mm -hmm. at least pound for pound. And I just don't feel that good right now. Yeah. I'm like, but now I'm supposed to be better. Yeah. I have all these reps and <laughs> yes, I, you know, and totally. it, it's like, it's this fleeting thing. And I think that's just sports and, and life in general, right? It's yeah. just like never perfect. Totally. And, and sometimes like I'm watching all these documentaries and all this and literally everyone, I'm watching the NASCAR one um, and Danny Hamlin, I think it was, he's, you know, one of the top guys and, and at one point he's like, you need to do this, you need to do this, and you need to get lucky. Yeah. And then Tom Brady, same thing. You know what? To win championships, you got to do this, 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 and you need some luck. Yeah. Basketball guys, same thing. I just yep. keep hearing it over and over. I'm like, yeah, you really do have to have everything fall in line. Yeah. Like even with the Norway guys, it's like they have this crazy chemistry. They have this freakishly great, uh, you know, element with with Anders at the net like just size wise like something people haven't seen yeah but then their connection together if Christian's with Hendrik who's still amazing the whole dynamic's different you know totally. if, if they're changing partners it's like everything has to come together you need a little luck in there yeah which is uncontrollable totally right it's out of our control and it's I don't know I guess I could rant on it all day <laughs> <laughs> no I totally hear that I feel like you just, you have to do the work to make sure that you're prepared for whenever that opportunity comes. Yes, yes. But it's totally right that like that opportunity has to present itself. Yeah. For that one moment for that breakthrough or that one partnership or that one coach, like those things are at least what I found very, yeah. very important to find success in your sport. So um, that's been a really nice, like humbling thing to actually go through. You can like give yourself grace a little bit. Right. Not let yourself off the hook, but you also can be like kind of out of my hands at this point. Yeah. Like, I did everything that I could. Yeah. And there's right? stuff, so. there's stuff going against me right now. Totally. Maybe luck's not, or luck's not in my favor totally. at the moment. Yeah. But yeah, like, like you said, it's like putting the percentages in your favor and being ready for when that, when everything kind of does align, yeah. are you ready, prepared? Did you put all the work in totally. to capitalize on it? Yeah. Yeah. I really like the way, um, Gervais put it in his book. Well, I guess Ricky Fowler. Have you, uh, picked up Gervais' new book? I haven't, no. It's, uh, you can borrow if you want. Okay, Stand sweet. Just while yeah. we're on our, while we're our, on our, our tour, tour, we'll do a little yeah. book swap. <laughs> I talked to a couple athletes actually about book swapping. We have like a little Instagram group. So, oh, that's awesome. So that's we don't have to bring the road, like, then 12 if you just, like bucks. bring two on the road yeah. and you can just swap with everyone, then yeah. your backpack's not like weighed down. But exactly. it takes me like a month and a half to read a book. <laughs> <It's> totally fine. <laughs> so, you in Brazil. We don't need to bring two. Yeah. But the anecdote that I really liked was he had, Ricky Fowler, mm -hmm. um, PGA Tour player. Yep. He putted 18 putts. Okay. And first round, he makes 16. Yep. And then second round, he makes 15. Gervais goes, well, what happened? He goes, I hit 17 good putts. And Gervais was like, but you made 15. He's like, yeah, I made 15. I made 17 good putts. That yeah. were two just slipped out. I'm like, so I'm pretty happy with the putts that I made. Yeah. And even though... Like he might be slightly unlucky if yeah. it didn't go in. He was more concerned with, did I hit the putt I wanted to hit? Right. And with, you know, with an Olympic race where both of you guys are kind of, you're chasing, yep. right? Both a little bit behind where if you just play the tournaments you want to play, if you practice how you want to practice, if you lift how you want to lift. Yeah. And sometimes you're going to get two trick laces against you that you can't control. Mm. Totally. And sometimes you get the two. Yeah, exactly. And I was like, Casey Patterson, he... I, mean, I practiced against him one day and he had like six trick laces. Yeah. And he goes, man, it's funny. The harder I work, the luckier I get. It's funny how that happens. I feel like yeah. that guy should just have a book of quotes. He should. <laughs> just like, yeah, incredible. Yeah. But. We just saw him yesterday too. It was fun to see old CPAT. I know. Oh, we wow. need to How's get him doing? on the show. Yeah, seriously. Yeah. I was thinking about, I was like, we could bring the podcast stuff up, but then that'd be a long day in Thousand Oaks. But yeah, we got to get CPAT oh, right. back on. Yeah. Yeah. Because you're just like, CPAT, we're just going to hit the button. And Kay, two you go. go yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's got stories for days. So well. Oh gosh. He'd be an entertaining one for sure. Yeah. Very. That would be yeah. that would bring viewership up. Yes. Yeah. But what uh what have these past three years been like for you? Oh my like, gosh. You've had yeah. Crazy success mm -hmm. and then a partnership shift, which is never easy. Yeah. And then success. I think you and Pavin to me, we're having success. Me too. And then, <laughs> and then partnership change. You switch positions. Yeah. And now you and Heather, to me, are having success. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. Here we are. Yeah. I think, I think over the past couple of years, I've, it's obviously been a whirlwind of emotion. It's been 
not exactly like seamless, I would say, um, in terms of like what my expectation was trying to qualify for this upcoming Olympics. Um, But I think in all of the like partnership changes and all of the experiences that I've had, I really just started to realize like the kind of athlete that I want to be on tour, especially. Mm -hmm. Um, I definitely am somebody who works really hard. Like I work hard in the gym. I work hard in practice. But it was recognizing the relationships that my partners have with other people on tour And so finding, like now playing with Heather, especially her coming out of retirement, seeing the amount of people who've gone out of their way to be like, welcome back. Like, it's so nice to have you back. Good to see you. It could be players. It could be coaches. It could be technical staff, like whoever it is. So I think just having now see her in that role, I'm like, oh, it'd be really nice to like leave the sport whenever I do having relationships with like the most random people on tour, staff, helpers, volunteers, players, coaches. Um, So it I feel like all of the shakeups have just really made me reflect on like the player that I want to be. Yeah. Yeah. And who is the player that you want to be? Um, that's a good question. I don't know if I like absolutely know the answer yeah. to that, but I think I just want to leave the sport being like with the recognition of like she did everything that she could. Yeah. There was definitely a moment after um Sarah broke up our team that I was like, you know what? The story where the person doesn't catch the end zone pass or doesn't hit the buzzer beater, like those stories are still important to be told. Very. Mm. Right? So I think we only talk about like the Cinderella stories yeah. and the people who like grind all the way to the championship and then they reach that gold medal. But it's like mm, the impactful ones are actually the ones that like they, maybe they lose in the semifinal. Yeah. Right? It's like that's those the stories. majority of the time. Yeah. It's like 90% those stories of are the so stories are those. Yeah. And people can relate to those. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And be okay with them and start becoming okay with failures as, as totally. we normalize these losses versus raising up all these like one percent stories where yeah they won the super bowl but it was off the tuck rule <laughs> and, uh, you know i got mean, a little that, lucky <laughs> now that i'm with heather i definitely have like shifted that back into like oh no i could be the cinderella story like i can be cinderella that's fine but i think it's important to like go through those moments and like especially as a perfectionist athlete and somebody who wants everything to be a certain way and i'm very like ocd in the way that i train mm-hmm. um i started to like allow myself like daily fails and I think like career fails are really important to just allow yourself to have because you're also human. Right. Right. Like you need to give yourself a little bit of grace, especially in tough moments. And as somebody who beats themselves up already, I'm like, you know what? I literally did everything that I could. Yeah. So and sometimes you just have to leave it at that. So, yeah, that's uh, reminds me of something that you said the other day, Try, is that um, when you watch the Poland Norway match, you're like, that was actually really fun to watch because I'm watching a match not from a scouting perspective yeah. and I realize that I don't have to be perfect. Yeah. Where even Anders, who I think is the greatest player who's ever touched yeah. a beach volleyball, yeah. he'll make stupid mistakes. Yeah. And he'll hit a cut shot under the net yeah. or whatever and he'll yeah. laugh it off and then he'll go back and just be an alien again for the next yeah. 25 minutes. Totally. <laughs> but perfection's totally. unattainable. Oh yeah. Like I, what, what is the quote that like progress doesn't make perfect, it makes progress? I always like to use um, something the refrain that I come back on a lot is progress, not perfection. There you go. And it's because of like, because we just have our, our, we try to set like kind of our three big intentions every day at practice. Yeah. And if something doesn't happen or like, you know, if you're working on option blocking or whatever and you miss it, yeah. but the intent was right. right. It's like, oh, it's progress. Exactly. Well, perfect. Exactly. It's progress. Yeah. Which I was like, I think I got that from, um, it was a Denzel Washington movie where he said mm. that. I was like, ooh, that's good. <laughs> that hits. When Denzel says anything, it hits. But <laughs> yeah. It's been interesting now, like, working with my sports psych that I used to work with with Brandy. Mm-hmm. I'm, like, back with her, and she does not care about how things feel. She's like, I'm so over this, like, but how did it feel? Like, when you hands at the ball, did it feel that, like, that yeah. right way? She's like, who gives an F if it feels that way? Yeah. Did the ball go from point A to point B the way <laughs> you wanted it? Okay, yeah. amazing. Right. She was like, stop trying to be perfect. Just be very good. Yeah. You don't need to be perfect. Like just that. be good. Mm-hmm. Good enough to like do the job that you need to do. Yeah. Um, which is very hard as against somebody who's a perfectionist <laughs> to just be like, okay with like good. Cause good for me is just like mediocre. Yeah. Right. Um, but did you win the game? Okay, great. Yeah, yeah. No, that's what I've been dealing with as well lately. Something for me that I, that I tried to work on was, was, um, embracing winning ugly. Yeah, totally. You know, like just like, totally. I feel like crap today. Yeah. Let's win ugly. Yeah. <laughs> Let's make this an ugly win. Like, yeah. And it just kind of allows me to be like, boom, bad play, whatever. Yeah. Like, I'm just going to figure out a way to win this match. I don't care if it's done well or what, whatnot. Mm-hmm. But that felt like freeing to me every once in a while. When I'm, instead of being like, I have to take control of this situation and like yeah. make sure everything starts going well. It's like, nah, I'm going to do the opposite and just let 
everything be ugly and weird and but I know I can still win it. And then if I do win right. it, what does that do for your confidence? Totally. You're like, I can even win I don't ugly. Have to play. Yeah, I don't have yeah. to play perfect. <laughs> yeah, I can totally. play perfect. I can play in my zone. And then if I'm not, I can still win. Totally. I still have that confidence that I can win. Totally. That was like a freeing key for me. Because yeah. I'm working on that whole perfectionism thing as well. Yeah. We got to get you on more Norsecas then. Just play jungle ball. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then you'll win ugly for sure. Yeah. <laughs> I think Norsecas, and everyone will be against you, and you'll still have to win. <laughs> I think Norsecas are so important. One, the memory bank. Oh, I mean, all my of my, gosh. I got some good memories. Yeah, like all of the most memorable experiences in both good ways and bad <laughs> have been Norseka. I mean, like one through ten, it's like Norseka, Norseka, Snow Volley, yeah. which is pretty much Norseka. Yeah, Norseka, Norseka. Yeah, and like you learned to win. When you got five minutes, heads up <laughs> right? That you none of, I playing. feel like not none of the memories for me are playing. They're always like either before matches where you're like, is this real? Is this really? <laughs> you got to tie like, that to the tree. The meeting or something where you're like sitting there for an hour and then it's like, okay, we're good. And like there was no meeting or like oh, God. trying to like get your money. And they're like, no, we're not going to pay you if you're not over here and grab it in five minutes. Right. Like, oh, it's insane. Yeah. Because I remember uh, in La Paz, um, we were playing, we were supposed to play Mexico in like two hours. Yeah. Night match. Oh, and gosh. then we, so me and Kyle were just sitting in the tent and La Paz is one of the better run Norsecas out there. And they're just calling, they call us on a loudspeaker of the stadium, like friend, my like you're up. And we were like, we were just told that we were going to play in yeah. two matches. Yeah. And we run onto the court. We had like two minutes to warm up. It's windy. It's night ball. It's against Mexico under the lights. Oh, and the, the crowd was rowdy. It was one of the most fun matches I've ever played. Oh, man. But so we just like warmed up as we like we just played. Like the, the second ball I hit was in serve receive at zero zero. <sighs> <laughs> and you just learned to win. I think those experiences are so important. Oh, absolutely. I When I was with Shanice this past year at the World Champs, uh, yeah. Norseka qualifier, I remember them at the technical meeting. They were like, okay, the games are going to start at 8 a.m. And then we're just going to roll. What does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> we're we're just going to roll. Everyone just sat under the tent all day. I think the last game was at like 4.30. Oh, and they're like, That's here's some day. watermelon and bananas. And we're like, do we get to eat? <laughs> like nobody had time to go back to the hotel because it was a bit of a walk away. Yeah. Um, so everyone just like sat under this tent and just watched all the games because they were just like, we're not going to tell you if you have 20 minute warm up. We're just going to roll. Yeah. So however the games go, however the games yeah. go. <laughs> it's but. so humbling too. Like being these top tier athletes like we put ourselves on yeah. this whatever top tier elite world-class athlete state uh, yeah. level right that's where we hold ourselves yeah and then like just to get so humbled and treated yeah. like that where yeah. like here's a little watermelon yeah. it might make you sick you're not yeah. sure you don't know <laughs> maybe don't eat it it's so humbling and then like yeah, yeah like no warm-up you're like i'm a elite world-class athlete what what do you mean no warm-up like yeah. this is not how it works i do my meditation i do this that right. that but like yeah, it's like what all the sports psychs are saying of like leaning into that challenge yeah. and like not trying to find the comfortable zones all the time. Yeah. Trying to stay in that discomfort and then adapt to it constantly like makes you really well prepared just for anything in life. Oh, totally. Yeah. That's why I've... Um, so hard though. Since I yeah. started coaching, <laughs> I've like... Every Saturday, I call like my coaching enrichment day. I oh, just nice. call like every coach who's Amazing. willing to pick up the phone. Wow, good for you. Like, what do you do? Like, how do I solve this problem? What do you guys do for this? And what I'm finding is that a lot of college coaches will intentionally create like that Norseka type environment. Oh, yeah. Where Stein used to like on flights. <laughs> yeah. He'd wake up all the girls, like run up and down and just wake them up and make them super uncomfortable or like. Is this Stein right, at UCLA? Yeah. yeah. Now, now at Texas and okay. he'd be like all right you have one court and three balls to warm up with and you have three minutes and then we're going to start competing and so he'll like so interesting. intentionally stress them out and mayor will do a lot of that at uh lmu and it's kind of a commonality but now i'm looking at trying came like i feel like they're already stressed enough <laughs> yeah i don't know if you should like add that <laughs> no, to we're good, bro. I think we need to add that element right we're good now. so funny anna was like complete opposite she was okay. like you guys are the best team in the world so that you guys are just going to be treated like you're the best in the world. Mm. Um, and, and like, that's another, it's another philosophy another way to look at it. Yeah. She totally. definitely created 
chaos like between the athletes but like intentionally tried to get us to compete a little bit harder yeah. and like she have created that, like, chaos just opening her mouth yeah, <laughs> yeah. she could put Literally. some stress on you she instantly yes, if she yes. wanted if to. she's like right here while you're serving you're like oh my gosh this is so much stress you're I feel like, like there's no Olympics heckler final. there's no heckler that's gonna get to me if i can no. rip a serve with Anna. she's top notch there. heckler i will yeah. also say that um but i remember there was one i think this happened twice to us but she had the top I think it was the top five pairs or even the top four pairs. She might not even have included our last pair. And she texted us and was like, hey, meet at Galen at this time. You guys are getting drug tested. And it was super weird because it wasn't like the drug test text that we normally get from right. SE where they're just like 6 a.m. meet at this place. Um, it was from her. So that felt a little bit weird. So we're like, oh, gosh, like what kind of drug test is this? Like yeah. everyone is like not panicking, but like it's 6 a.m. Nobody wants to be awake at that time. Um, and so we show up to Galen and she had booked out like two of the rooms for like massage therapy. So okay. she had like the seniors and the starters get massages, but we thought we were getting drug tested. That's cool. <laughs> and I was like, you are the worst, but I also love this. Like, <laughs> this is also amazing. Um, so she would definitely do kind of like crazy off the books stuff yeah. like that. But yeah. Yeah. In college too, I feel like everything's very regimented and you're yeah. kind of coming from, because once you go pro in beach volleyball, everything's on you. Yeah. It's a, it's a craziness, right? But like in college or playing indoor everything's regimented like yeah. flights this we're going to show up here and do that at mm -hmm. this time and blah 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 so for college coaches especially for beach volleyball to like give you a piece of that that yeah. that chaos before you leave is, is probably a pretty good idea totally <laughs> or else true. you're just like yeah. mind blown when you leave you're like what is happening yeah everything is way less professional than when I wasn't a professional. <laughs> yeah. When I was playing with Jamie Broder, I went to a Norseco with her and didn't bring any food, didn't bring any snacks. I was yeah. like such a little naive volleyball player that had just come out of college. I was like, what do you mean they don't prepare it for you? Yeah. What do you mean you don't yeah. just like get food and get snacks? This is crazy. Yeah. So I just absolutely devoured all of hers, but I was so ill prepared because I didn't have really that experience of what it felt like or what was necessary to be a professional while being on these tours. Mm. Yeah. So it's definitely eye opening for sure. Uh, I feel like your learning curve as a professional, like when I saw that on, when I was just going through BBB, oh, I God. like, I can't believe <laughs> that you're only 28 because I feel like <sighs> you've just done so much stuff. <laughs> you've it's, done a lot of stuff it's actually kind of wild because my mom will say that yeah she'll be like you've done so much in your little life and i'm like have i is this not what like <laughs> people do is this not like a normal career pathway for people that's that's um, a good point yeah so it it feels like it's just like what everybody does and goes through yeah um but i think over the past like year and a half like i've definitely reflected a little bit more than i ever have about my career and i'm like oh my god i did do all that stuff that's pretty yeah. crazy yeah, yeah, it's it's trippy to like step back and like gain perspective mm. on like how unique our lives are. Totally. Which I don't think I've done enough. I'm just thinking about it now, you know, versus like if I wasn't a pro beach player and like I just, well, I wouldn't have gone to SC. So I wouldn't have even been here if it wasn't for volleyball. Like where, where would I be without yeah. volleyball? Yeah. Like I might still be on the same little island, which is amazing, by the way. But yeah doing kind of you know standard job and kind of hanging out on the same place i always was yeah yeah it's, it's crazy i feel like it's um it's easier for me to have that reflection because i come from a place where what we're doing is so abnormal mm. where most of my friends from home don't have passports wow. my parents don't have a passport okay. my brothers have left the country a combined two times <laughs> okay and so when i come back they're like you're from you went to brazil wow like can we just touch you yeah <laughs> yeah and it's crazy and so i get like that perspective every time i go home they're like yeah. holy cow this is kind of remarkable like what we're able to do <laughs> totally as hard as some of this stuff can be just figuring out the travel and yeah. oh we forgot to get picked up in cuba and so we got to figure out how yeah. to get to veradero which is a three-hour drive yeah you're like <laughs> i'll figure it out i know now how to make it work yeah because i've like had all these other experiences yeah but yeah i think it's pretty cool though like especially having conversations with beach volleyball athletes. And mm -hmm. I will I will credit other indoor athletes as well, but there's something special about beach volleyball players because of yeah. all of the craziness that we go through. I think especially in North America, yeah. um, you just learn so much about yourself. And so this is just pretty much like the sport's just a catalyst for you in your own personal development, essentially is what it is. And I think you can tell having conversations with beach volleyball players that they are beach volleyball players. Yeah. Just the way they communicate, the way they talk mm -hmm. to other people, the way they problem solve or go through conflict resolution, like all these things are 
between you and one other person. You don't often have somebody to mediate. Right. Um, so it's it's interesting, like having conversations with beach people versus like other, yeah. even just other athletes. Yeah. Think about like going to the airport. Like, and it trips me out nowadays because I could walk through the airport like in a full just meditative yeah. state of, you know, lines and people yelling yeah. and I'm just looking at people yeah. like, oh my God, you're losing it. Yeah. Like, I would never work at the airport. Like the way that these people are treating just because they're freaking out and yeah. they think their flight is going to be late. And I'm like, you have about 45 minutes more than I do. Yeah. And I am not worried at all. I know exactly. Like, a coffee. like we're good here. We're yeah. all good. I promise you. And everyone's... Like 90% of the people in the airport are just high intensity, yeah. freaking out. They're not sure if they're going to get there. I'm like, even if you miss it, it's one day of your life. Yeah. You're going to go sit and watch some Netflix for a few hours and it's probably good for you. You know, <laughs> you you'll, be, nice you'll be fine. <laughs> you don't have to do anything on the plane. There's no pressure. You're just, it's all good. You just walk yeah. over there and sit and then walk off. But like everyone's so high strung and freaking yeah. out about it. Yeah. You, you don't see beach volleyball players like that. We're all at this point just like, how much are you going to charge me? How much for my bag? Or like, yeah, you know, exactly. like all these crazy things that, and we're just like, yeah. delayed at four hours. Like, all right, whatever, you know? <laughs> totally. It's like a dumb and dumber. It's like, how was your day? Ran off the jetway again. And he's just like, oh, cool. How cool. was yours? Seriously? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm like, oh, you missed this flight? Like this happened to you? We're like, oh yeah, that seems pretty comparable to my day. Yeah. Like, yeah. It's it's interesting. My my family travels quite a bit. I would say like we're not um, all my like siblings are athletic, so they all yeah. do their own type of traveling. But my mom traveling is like the cutest thing in the entire world <laughs> because she will still like print out her itinerary oh, sure, yeah. and put it in like a plastic sleeve. I yeah. love She's like, I need to get to the airport five hours before. I'm like, we live. I like when people dress up too nowadays. Minutes. Yeah, like back in the day, you're supposed to like dress nice, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. To fly. Nope, not these we're days. Like, uh, no. I'm like eye mask, like hood on, all the yeah. things to make me just like absolutely KO. Yeah. I don't care what I look like. Yeah. I'd get one of those things that like you put over the front or the other person's the back of their seat uh -huh. in front of you, and you just like put your arms in and sleep. Oh yeah, have yeah, you guys yeah. seen those things? I've yeah, seen it. I absolutely would do that. <laughs> oh, sure. There's like no care on airplanes. No, there's no care. Oh, no. Not at all. No, we're like not sweaty. We have like wet board shorts dangling from yeah. our oh. backpack, and like. The worst or the the best was when I poured a bunch of sand on a guy's meal because I put my backpack up above him and like you know that little sand that little yeah. empty pocket at the yeah. bottom I just turned it and just oh no he was so pissed he wasn't like in a good mood and oh like, no I was like bro my bad like he, he was so confused and so yeah. pissed oh. he was like. <laughs> Did I just get <laughs> sand dumped all over me? Oh my an, gosh. Yeah, I felt pretty bad, but also kind of funny. I think we have the most amount of plane stories as we do North Seca stories. <laughs> yeah. I've had some sure. like hysterical moments on planes when I look back and I'm like, that happened to me? Like, yeah. I, I don't know if I've ever told you this, but when I was flying to the Netherlands uh, for the Hague tournament, that's over New Year's. Yeah. Um, it was myself, Julie Gordon, and our coach, Adriana Bento at the time. Okay. And we're all sitting in aisle seats and no one is next to us on the window seat. I can't believe I'm telling this, but whatever. <laughs> and so the cabin door is about to close and this like massive Dutch, like ginger Dutch man walks onto the plane. <laughs> and I'm like, this guy's for sure sitting next to me. Like there's no way <laughs> no. this guy's not. And so he like obviously taps me on the shoulder. I excuse myself and like move into the aisle. We're delayed on the tarmac for a bit. And he goes, so are you a talker or a sleeper? And I'm like, a bit of both. First mistake. Always a sleeper, always yeah, a sleeper. Just, yeah. So this guy's like talking my ear off. Anyways, we're up in the air and I'm watching the crown on my phone. So I have my phone like perched up on my tray table and I'm wearing Bluetooth headphones, like yeah. full headphones. And he taps me on the shoulder and he goes, what are you watching? Oh God. And I was like, oh, it's oh, called God. The Crown. It's like an hour and 15 minute like per episode. And I'm like halfway through the second season. He goes, can I watch with you? And I said, well, sorry, like, I don't know how this is going to work. Like I have Bluetooth headphones. And uh, he like <laughs> looks and he has like his regular like jack headphones. Yeah. And so he like tries to plug it into my phone and any like 21st century person knows that's not going to work. Right. My Bluetooth's <laughs> going to disconnect. So I was like, sorry, like I'm not getting anything. And so he looks at me and he goes, oh, no. And I don't know how to say no. So I take this headphone and I'm sitting with this random Dutch man, like watching the crown <laughs> on ear to phone. ear on my phone on the plane. <laughs> Julie and my coach are like, what are you doing? And it wasn't like, a, it, it had a cord. Yeah, it, wasn't, it was a cord. It wasn't. Oh, no, wow. I was like, this is me and my boyfriend in high school. Like, trying <laughs> right. to, like listen to oh, something. No. So then the episode ends, thank gosh. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to go to sleep. So I put my like head on my tray table and it's over New Year's. Yeah. And so the pilot comes on and he's like, 
I just want to wish everyone a happy new year's, like very, very serene voice. Everyone's sleeping. This guy pushes me off my tray table, screams happy new year's in the airplane. Oh so gosh. now everybody on the airplane is what? looking at us and it is my nightmare to be looked at in public. <laughs> and so now I'm just like cowering in my seat being like, oh my God, what did I get myself into? Oh, so man. this word, words of advice, always a sleeper. Everybody, yeah. Oh always a sleeper. I thought he was going to try to like snuggle on your pillow. He's like, honestly, that, share that pillow. That that's wasn't, <laughs> that, you know, that wouldn't be far from what he just kind of puts his head on your back or something you know, like, on your yeah. shoulder. You're like, okay. If somebody did that though, would you stop them? I feel like I would just let them sleep. Well, I've, uh, yeah, I've, I've woken up, like I've fallen asleep and I've woken Oof. up and the person in the middle has like their head has fallen onto my head. Yeah, I've done that. Like, well, I yeah. go for it. I'm, like, like, you I'm just, just going to hang out. I'm yeah. not going to wake you up. Yeah, but if they do it on purpose while they're awake, <laughs> like different. to get comfy. <laughs> yeah. Like, and no, no, no. They're bro. like nestling like a cat. You're like, yeah. mm, this is a little much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> if it's a conscious effort, it's a no. We've watched the show together. Right? <laughs> this is, we're this at is this Netflix point. and chill, right? This is Netflix and chill. It's not so chill. funny because um, comedians, like you talked about how you and Trevor, like four tournaments was kind of your max. Yeah. So when comedians are on the road, they have a similar rule because like art imitates life. Right. Right. And so if you're a comedian and you're on the road for like nine straight weeks. Yeah. All you have are plane stories. Yeah. And so, gosh, I forget uh, I forget what comedian I was listening to. And I was like, that's actually really funny because I think that you can sort of tell where we are in the season with the podcast mm. by how often travel stories are coming up on True. the podcast. True. <laughs> right. Yeah, fair. Because we spend so much time in the air. Like, do you have that flighty app? That I don't want to know. Using. I want to yeah. download. I don't that. want to know how many hours I've spent in an airplane. Mm. Yeah, because it's because Chris and Taryn they loved it, and I saw Mel putting up a thing where she spent <sighs> like something around fifteen days. Oh yeah, in the air last year, and I was like, God bless. Yeah, Holy it took God. Heather and I forty hours to get from Brazil to the Philippines. Yeah, I bet. Like it was that was probably the most insane travel that I've ever experienced, especially the way that it happened. We had booked our flight. I think it was on Friday evening, so we weren't sure we were going to qualify, and we had to be really prepared for Philippines because yeah. that was a challenge and we needed to do well in that one. And then we ended up beating Stam and Shun, um, which was a big win for us. Mm -hmm. But then Brazil was losing to Germany quite bad. And so we were like, are we going to make playoffs? Like, are we going to have a three-way tie and then end up like making it through? Yeah. But anyways, we like booked our flight for 545. Our game was at three o'clock. <laughs> I was like, Heather, we're not making this. We need to change our flight. She was like, we can make it. I was like, veteran Heather thinks we're making this yeah. flight. This is insane. So anyways, it's probably like four o'clock. We've like run back to the hotel, barely showered. We're disgusting. Grab our bags, grab an Uber. We're in the car watching the score of like their game happen. I get a message from my travel agent saying, canceled your flight because I had been inquiring to her about changing. She's like, yeah. canceled your flight. So oh now God. I'm like in the, in the Uber being like, dude, what the heck? I have to get to the Philippines. What yeah. do you mean you canceled my flight? So we ended up getting to the airport. I took Heather's bags because she had 25 minutes to make it to her <laughs> flight. She ended up being fine because I had her bags. And then I went back to the hotel, stayed a day, and then rebooked a flight. Oh, man. And so she flew oh, from no. Brazil through Ethiopia to the Philippines, and I flew through Doha. Oh, my God. And it was 40 Brazil, hours. Ethiopia. Oh. What? It was the most insane travel ever. Yeah, I've done a 40 from Brazil to China. Yeah. It's not recommended. too much. When you're halfway through and it's been 20 hours. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> It hits You're your like, soul. <laughs> this is the the worst part yeah. for me is getting there, okay. and then realizing that you still have to figure out the taxi and yeah. like sometimes it's like an hour still, yeah. Yeah, or like a two hour shuttle or yeah. something like that. Yeah, You're like I did all this, can I, and I'm here. Can I just be here? <laughs> mm -hmm. I just need to be at the hotel right now. And yeah. then you're like, yeah. nope. Not yet. Smash into like a little taxi, little and he's gonna drive head. slow and talk to you a lot or yeah. something. You know. <laughs> yep. So. Well, you mentioned uh, veteran Heather. Mm -hmm. When you've played with your last three partners, have been some of the more experienced, accomplished players yeah. in Canadian beach volleyball history. Yeah, like you've probably learned so much and so many different things mm -hmm. from all of them. And I feel like Heather, she's so quiet. Yeah, but I feel like when Heather's on your team, she's probably this like vault of just golden nuggets. She one hundred percent is. I would the way that I describe Heather is she's probably one of the most reliable people. I think. And I think that's a really important quality to have in a partner. Yeah. Um, just because I know that she's going to do what she said she's going to do. Or if she sees something different, I know that like, I obviously trust her decision in that. Um, but she is just like, she seems super quiet. She works incredibly hard, 
but she is top 10 funniest people. Really? She is it's so quiet one. She's so subtly funny. funny. Yeah. If you watch her and Sam That's interact. So true. Yeah. Oh my gosh. They are hysterical because they've known each other Sam for forever. Jacker. Yeah. Okay. Um, and so they have all their little inside jokes and they're so comfortable with yeah. each other, but she is very, very, very funny. <laughs> I will tell you that much, which I think surprises a lot of people. Surprised me. To it would be surprise me. Honest. Yeah. I thought she was somebody who was just like very intense, very quiet, worked exceptionally hard. All those things are true. Plus, she's also like part time comedian, I swear. Yeah. <laughs> so funny. Well, how did uh, how did you guys end up partnering? Because I know that Heather was coaching mm-hmm. and then because that was no like small thing, right? No. For her to go from coaching to playing. Yeah, it was a pretty big deal. Um, so after uh, Brandy and I split up, there was thoughts of like, okay, well, I considered myself to be a defender. Mm-hmm. So I only looked at blocking options. Yeah. But then there was also a moment where I was like, do I call up Heather? Like, I don't even know if she wants to play, if she wants to continue to play. I didn't really know her at this time. Mm-hmm. I think we had maybe had like a handful of conversations yeah. um, up until this point. And so when Sarah and myself, when we broke up, I asked Heather if she'd be willing to like come out of retirement and play with me um, for the next two years. And she she really missed competing. Um, and I think now she has a different outlook on competition because she's been coaching. Yeah. but. She also doesn't make decisions lightly. She likes to take her time and weigh out all her options and um, gather information to make sure it's the right decision for her. So I wanted to give her enough time to have those conversations with the Federation because, again, she was the next gen coach at the time. Um, And then when she made the decision, I was like, oh, thank gosh. Yeah. Like, I have a partner. This is amazing. But um, she was such an asset to the program. And I think she'll maybe go back into coaching whenever she decides to be officially done, if that's ever because I know that she just loves it so much. So, yeah. And you guys have had some some success. Um, yeah. Because she, you guys won, what, the Van Open? Like right won, That was bat? our first tournament. Yeah, we won the That's Van Open. That's a fun way to start. That was, it was really special to be able to, for her to come out of retirement in Canada. Like I think the Van Open and then playing Edmonton and then playing Montreal, she was like, oh, I never have to leave the country to play on tour. Yeah. Like, this is amazing. Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't need to renew my passport. This is great. <laughs> I was like, this doesn't happen often. So, um no, it was like especially special for her to, I think, come out of retirement and for us to have success at home. Yeah. Um, her like mom came to visit. I had like my L.A. family from here come down to the Van Open to come and watch, which is awesome. Her yeah. boyfriend's been in a couple tournaments. So it really does feel like we have a squad, which is, yeah, something I didn't necessarily have with yeah. my other partnerships. Yeah. That's important, I think, to have like a cohesive team. Yeah. Where... Everyone, you might not necessarily be on the same page all the time, but everyone's like together in it. Totally. And yeah, I'm glad that you've you found that. Yeah, we like didn't need to have conversations about um, whether we win or we lose. Like we leave the court together. Yeah, that's just like a non negotiable. But like that. we didn't need to have that conversation. Right. It just I respect her. She respects me. There's like that common courtesy um, where those have just kind of become routines. And I know that that's important for her. That's important for me. Mm-hmm. But it was really nice to not have that conversation. Yeah. Um, which I think some people need to have. Yeah. Uh, so that was that was really special, I yeah. think. I am curious what what broke down with you and Pav? Because yeah. like like your on paper results yeah. were good. I thought For sure. and I thought even the the matches you guys were losing, most of them anyway, mm-hmm. like you lost like 14, 16 to AP and Duda, I think twice maybe. You yeah. disagree with them. Yeah, and I was yeah. like, oh yeah. Like, I hit Sarah three and balls Sophie. into Anna Patricia's angle block. We were up. Oh, gosh. It's going to haunt me forever. No one's ever been blocked. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, she's not going to do it again. Best team in the world. She's not going to do it again. Yeah. I was like, oh, God, just hit it more angle and more hard. Yeah. No, yeah. That didn't work. Um, but yeah, no, in terms of like our performance, I think that like we could have been a very successful team. Mm-hmm. But again, like you're saying, I think the personality component is something that's really important. And for me, like volleyball isn't my whole life. It's not my end all be all. Yeah. So I think when... I spend so much time doing what I do. I want to be super happy. I want to be, in, I want this to be enjoyable. Yeah. And I think Sarah and I are just very hard personalities. Like everybody in Volleyball Canada was like, this is either going to be incredible or this is going to hit the fan in a couple months. <laughs> right. Because we're both like exceptionally like aggressive people. And yeah. I think just like personality wise, it was either going to thrive or it wasn't. And we gave it a go and it just like didn't work out the way I think either of us intended for it to go. Yeah. Um, but I think I'm happy that I gave it a shot. I would have questioned if this was the right move if I'd asked Heather before Sarah. Um, so yeah, I'm like, I'm fine with the way things kind of like shook out the way yeah. that they did. And yeah. it's it's important on a, a number of levels. One, because like you said, you'd always be wondering, yeah, like, what if you tried it? And yeah. I think the most haunting words in the English language are what if. 
Yeah, and I'm I not don't a, have to know. I'm not a what if person and, anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you that much. And I think that you guys at least were able to split up early enough yeah. where you're both still in the Olympic race with your new partners. Yeah. And so it's kind yeah. of like blessing in disguise for sure. For both of you. Yeah. I don't yeah. think that was like the intended plan, obviously. Right. Um, but I'm like happy that the conversations we had happened when they did, um, at the tournaments that they did, so that it did give us opportunities to like find other people that we find were more suitable for ourselves. Um yeah, and it gives Canada, you know, an extra team in the race, which is interesting because yeah. we've not often had like three actual teams that could be vying for an Olympic spot. Yeah, I think that uh I think the Canadian women's race and the Swiss women's race are Ooh, the two most uh, interesting. Yeah. So Zoe and Anouk yeah. are within twenty points of each other. I'm like, whoo, that's like, ten thousand. Yeah. Man. <laughs> I'm like, you like your sister how much? Like, oh gosh. So I'm watching those two. I'm like, man, this is one of the most fascinating Olympic races yeah. I can remember. Yeah. This is gonna be a very interesting one, I think, on a lot of different fronts. Yeah. yeah. It's gonna be good. Yeah, and I mean we're lots to write about, Trav. Lots yeah. to write about. Yeah, it's weird. I'm like looking at now that I added quite a big extra ball to juggle with coaching, yeah. I'm like, something's got to go. Somebody's like playing is completely out the window. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What's surprising to me is that how much more time actually coaching takes than playing. For sure. Because like once I was done practicing as a player, I was done. Yeah. It was like, you know, maybe two and a half hours yeah. a day. And then, but that was it. But like coaching, when a practice ends, I'm like, all right, well now I need to take these next couple hours to figure out different ways we can solve different problems and like what are the what are the big things we improved on what are the things that we're still lacking and how right. can we improve that and how can i communicate that so like no one's going to kill each other right. yeah <laughs> i feel like especially with how like intense and contentious this year is yeah. i think having that part of coaching is really important just like how do i have these conversations with these athletes because like tensions are already high mm -hmm. i feel like that's 90 percent. Right? i'm finding that's like 90 percent of coaching right now yeah. is it is how can I communicate the message in the right way that Tri's going to hear it? And how can I tweak that messaging that mm -hmm. Cam's going to hear it, even though it's the same message? Totally. Where, and you talked about like, you know, you and Sarah were same personalities. Yeah. And then you and Heather are different personalities. And yeah. so you guys are like talking how to figure out how to communicate to each other. Totally. Because at some level, like, you know how to hit a high line. Yeah. And Tri knows how to hit a line. And everyone knows like physically, yeah. the difference is very subtle. Totally. It's just all the mental performances that I think make that big difference. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Do you have any mental training practices? I feel like that's been a big thing for athletes. Like the the swell of that is coming up. And yeah. I'm always, that's one topic I'm so interested in is what do different athletes do to train their minds? Yeah. I mean, I love my mental performance coach in sports. Like she's like all in one, which I feel like is not often found in like one practitioner. Um, her name is Dr. Dana Sinclair. And she actually just came out with a book. It's called Dialed In. If From Canada? Interested. Based yeah, in Canada. Um, but she works with like other MLB teams. She works mm -hmm. with NASCAR. She works with like a variety of NHL as well. Um, but she works with players as well as coaches, mm -hmm. which is really cool in teams. Um, and she's just like very direct, very honest, very upfront. So she can be your therapist where like she's your friend and like you just need to vent to her. But she's also like, okay, now enough of this. You have a goal to do. How do we get you from point A to point B? Um, like, yes, all of this is valid. We're going to take this and learn from it. But like, how are we going to streamline you to like be able to perform now? Um, so it's not really anything that's we don't have like specific practices for mental performance and that kind of thing. But there are definitely definitely strategies that we're working on yeah. um, to deal with. Like, for me, it's acknowledging like accomplishments. Like I've never done a good job of being like, oh, yeah, that was really cool that I did that and, and celebrating myself because I never wanted to be seen as somebody who was cocky or somebody who was egotistical or arrogant or any of those things. And that's something that started from like when I was a kid because I was like pretty successful in sport yeah. as like a young soccer player. Um, so that's something that currently like had a conversation with her yesterday about starting to work on. And she's told me to start a list and she was like, let's make a list of all the things that you like about yourself. Personality wise, like what would your friends and family say that they like about you? Those things I'm like, ironing off i'm like oh that that that, that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. and then she's like okay now in sport like what have you accomplished i'm like uh crickets <laughs> so it's interesting i'm like yeah. in a, as a person i can label all these types of things that i love about myself and then as an athlete i really struggle with like n convincing myself that i'm good at this sport because for me accomplishments don't equate to you being good at the sport mm, right. like trophies and things don't that doesn't mean that you're good at the sport so we're trying to figure out a way to have me start to believe that in myself. That's so interesting. Huh. Yeah. It's uh 
like the mental makeup of athletes, everyone's so different. So different. It's so fascinating. Because then you, on the other side of that, you could have someone who's never made a finals of a CBVA, much yeah. less a world championships, and they're just like, uh-huh. Yeah, totally. Just me up. Totally, <laughs> totally. And I don't know like where it stemmed from. I'm sure it's going to be like deeply rooted and we're going to go into my childhood traumas and like <laughs> all those things. But um, I'm excited to work on that because I think that growth aspect will just benefit me in life as a whole. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Not necessarily just as a volleyball player, which I'm sure it will, but... Um, yeah, it'll help me just in my like daily life. So yeah, yeah it seems to be like when you gain a deeper understanding of yourself yeah. is when it kind of frees you to, to, I guess, flow better right. with, with the things that are coming at you in life Yeah, versus like letting all these external things yeah. affect you. Yeah. I think it's just having a better understanding of why you react to certain things the way that you do. And yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I think that knowing a little bit more about yourself helps you navigate. Yeah. Cause you can recognize it as it comes up. Right? Totally. Yeah. yeah. But if you can't like label it and you don't know why, then you're just mm-hmm. like, well, I'm frustrated yeah. about X, Y, and Z, but you can't like put a label on it. Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah. We had a kind of a similar conversation in the drive back from practice yesterday where we're talking about like, do you, do people love you for who you are or what you do? Mm. And I think that's actually a cool thing that you were able to list off aspects of your personality yeah. away from sport that you liked. Yeah versus if you're just like oh well i'm awesome because you know i've won like this many norseka medals and right. i won a gold medal at those futures i think you have <laughs> i think you have it right I'm, i mean i hope so <laughs> it's definitely not benefiting me in sport though and i think especially for this year like that's something that we're gonna have to tackle but i definitely will say that i've surrounded myself over the past couple of years and it's been very it's been a hard couple of years yeah with just the most amazing people at home here in LA, like I really do have the most amazing friends and the most amazing family ever. Um, And I think being able to list off all those things, I'm able to do that because I've like seen that in them or they've like echoed that about me. Um, A friend of mine for her birthday every year. So no matter whose birthday it is, we don't talk about the birthday girl. The birthday girl goes around the table and she says something that she likes about everybody Oh, cool! in the room or like something that she values or something that she wants to be better in herself because of the people she surrounds herself with so I think my my group of friends is really introspective and they really reflect on who they are as people and that definitely helps me be able to like say it out loud and be like I am really thoughtful like I am really <laughs> right. all of these different things uh-huh. so huh yeah and you've been able to surround yourself with exceptional people I mean if you just think about your class <laughs> at USC yeah last year at world championships I was like <laughs> all right that was I think there were nine yeah people from USC including the men so you, Sophie, Therese, Sarah, Kelly, uh, I counted Gustavo, Megan, <laughs> uh, Megan Craft, yeah. and there were, I think there were two more. Tina. Uh, Tina. And then we're missing either eight or, or we're missing one. Um, who could have been there? But. Yeah. Oh, Julia. Schools. Oh, schools. Yeah. Was SC. Of course. Um, and I don't think you would constantly be in these exceptional groups if you were not also exceptional. Yeah. And I, I think like conceptually i know that yeah i'm just like i don't really like care which is such a weird thing to like say and it could be just because i've always been around really successful people that it's just like my norm Mm -hmm. yeah to like be surrounded by you probably just don't think it's helpful like based on your experience like it's not helpful for me to think that way yeah so you just kind of ignore it yeah right Right. even though it's very much true i feel like i've seen people like take it to the extreme and I'm like, I don't want to be that. Yeah, yeah. So right. now I'm like, we're gonna go on this side and right, just like right, live right. over here. When it's like, there's got to be a middle ground. Like you got to find a way somewhere over here. So we're gonna slowly start inching our way. Like that, yeah. That way. I don't and think I'll ever get past fifty. Like I don't think I'll <laughs> ever teeter that way. Although people in the comments tell me if you think so. I don't <laughs> yeah, know. Right. But, <laughs> well, the yeah. cool part about being surrounded by all those exceptional people is that it's also an incredibly humbling experience. Oh yeah. Because yeah. I, totally. You can't think I'm the greatest defender in the world when Heather Bansley's playing behind you. Yeah, that is a hard And you can't no. think I'm the greatest blocker in the world when you block behind Brandy, mm-hmm. who's almost as much of an alien as Anders totally. is. Totally. And Pavin, who's accomplished more than anyone in Canada. Where like yeah. when you're surrounded by all these people, you're like, yeah, I still have a long way to go. Totally. But I'm on my way there. Yeah. It's totally. It's a way to be. Totally. Very humbling, I would say. And I've I've been very lucky like throughout my entire career. Like I look at the list of people that I've played with and I've 
always been able to kind of level up with my partnerships. Mm -hmm. So I was the younger athlete that got picked up by older athletes. And then that person would retire or start their life or start a family. Then I was like, okay, well, what's the next level? Pick up that person and then like so on and so yeah. forth. And I was like, man, none of my partners are still playing. <laughs> like any of my old partnerships are like not playing because they've all started families yeah. or like moved on with their lives. But for me to be able to be 18 years old, 19 years old, playing with Jamie Broder, like that's crazy. Yeah. Playing with Victoria Altamar at the time, who was like this goddess to me. <laughs> so I've always been able to play with really successful Canadian alumni, at least in like Canada's book. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I've just always been able to like look up to my partnerships and things like that. So I'm excited for the time that I can do that for a younger athlete. I don't know how long I'll be able to do that for, but <laughs> yeah. to be able to pick somebody up and like really guide them the way that I was fortunate to be yeah. guided. So, and it's well, it's a tricky dance too because at, at the on the same same time you can look at Heather, mm -hmm. like I can look, I I'm going to look up to you because yeah. Heather, I think I think Mel will get there, but I think Heather right now is the greatest defender Canada's had. Oh, she she built the program on her bareback. Yeah, that girl, like she, you know. <clears throat> Didn't qualify for 2012, but she had no funding, mm -hmm. no coaches. She was the first person to move to LA. Like anything that Canada has built as a program and everything that Canadian athletes have been able to be fortunate enough to experience or to have the bare minimum funding that we do have is because of Heather, mm -hmm. like no one else. And I will hundred percent like go to the grave saying that she is the whole reason that volleyball Canada exists on the yeah. beach side. So, um, yeah, sorry, I didn't mean to like cut you off. No, I just needed to say no. that. That's <laughs> 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 awesome. Yeah. But at the same time, where you can admire Heather for all she's done, like you're also an equal on the team. Yeah. Where is, is that hard for you? Where if she says something to say, you know, I just like I I see it this way. Right. Because it's like, who am I to disagree with Heather Bansley? Totally. I think it depends on like what the situation is because mm -hmm. there's definitely more experience there. Like she knows more than I do in beach volleyball. She's had a million more touches than I have. Um, but we did a, a radio interview when we were in Edmonton and she's the first partner that I had that actually referred to our team as a partnership. Really? Which I found to be really funny. Like a lot of people will be like, oh, this is my partner or this is yeah. my teammate. But teammates and partnership are very different hmm. like you guys in your marriages are partners with somebody like yeah. you go through life trying to problem solve and do all these things with a partner versus just like your teammate that's mm -hmm. just like your buddy that you're yeah. coexisting with versus somebody you're like collaborating with their yeah. problems so. your problem their exactly. success is your success yeah. yeah so it was really like it it actually thrown me it like threw me a little bit to hear that from her um also because words are really important to me but for her to be like i think she got asked something about her like mentorship and her um, mm. experience as a volleyball player. And then she looked at me and she was like, well, Sophie knows just as much as I do. Like she's also an experienced volleyball player. So this is a partnership. And I was like, oh, that's so nice <laughs> to like <laughs> actually hear that from somebody and for her to like say it without being prompted to have to say it, which was really special. So yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Well, it's cool to see you. Uh, you landed back on your feet. I do. Uh, it's like I'm a cat. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just a cat. Spider-Man. Yeah. I mean, hey. <laughs> Spider-Woman. <laughs> You know, I should be wearing all black. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be a fun uh, rebrand. Well, you do, you're doing like some kind of business is yeah. like an apparel thing. Um, I was doing an apparel. So funny enough, you okay. mentioned like talking about what if. Yeah. Me and my friend Karen often, like now we change that vernacular to like even if. Okay. So instead of like, what if this happens? Oh, what if I don't qualify? What if I get injured? What if I do X, Y, and Z? Okay, even if you do, mm. you're going to be fine. Yeah. Like your, your life is going to move on. You're going to put your pants on one leg at a time the next day. Like yeah. you're going to be fine. Um, so just kind of changing the even if to what if or from what if to even if has been helpful. Um, but that's kind of taken like a background. Okay. Just with all the other things yeah. that I have Keeping the main thing going the main on thing. in my life right now. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I'm actually just starting to program for my academy that's happening this summer. Very cool. And uh, I just brought on Jake McNeil. My guy. Yes. I love Jakey. I yeah. miss him. I haven't he's, seen him in a long time. He's, I think he's in New Zealand right now with Alex Russell. Yeah. yeah <laughs> so. I think they're doing the New Zealand, Australia, yeah. back to back. Yeah. Well, Jake, I mean, talk about a guy who's lived many lives. That's Jake another has one. has been everywhere. Everywhere. And back. Everywhere I went on the road, because me and Jake traveled together, we did like 12 of the same FIVBs one year. Wow. And everywhere I went. He was like, yeah, yeah, I spent three months here. Yeah. It's like, why? He's like the most nomadic human ever. And I'm like, but why though? Like, go home. <laughs> yeah, he's just so fine to like live out of a suitcase and like spend time with his friends. And, yeah, yeah. Um, his girlfriend's also super supportive of all mm -hmm. that for him. So yeah, he, he's, my mom loves watching Jake because he's just the most like eccentric, like passionate beach volleyball player mm. in Canada. Yeah. 
just loves the sport to death. So that's really nice. the colors he wears to the passion he plays, it's all the same. man. (laughs) It's so fitting. He's like, let's start Jersey Fridays in Canada. So all the boys show up in jerseys and like... That guy can make a game out of anything. Oh, yeah. I swear, he'll be like, there's an elastic and a coin. We can play this, this, and this. I'm like, how did you just come up with that? Yeah. <laughs> this makes no sense. I don't no, know if this is a tough. dude thing or just like a Jake <laughs> thing, but I could not, no. But. Good person to have around on the road. Very. Yeah. Very. I loved traveling with him. Very. He's very lighthearted and yeah. can always find fun in a lot of things, which yeah. is really, really special. So Yeah. We mentioned the yeah. Academy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Tell us more about it. Where can people find info or yeah. Um, well, it's a. I kind of started this academy as a way to bridge the gap between youth sport and NCAA sport or kind of post-secondary. So it's called the Northern Elite. Okay. Um, and it <clears throat> runs for 10 weeks in the summer. It runs from like second week of June, so June 10th until nationals. And it's just a program for athletes to actually get high performance beach volleyball training. Cool. So both men and women... Um, we have an amazing staff. It's all national team athletes as coaches. Okay. So they get an opportunity to make a little bit of money, which is nice to be able to fund their own mm-hmm. careers. And then there's the mentorship aspect, right? So our head coaches are all national team athletes. Our court coaches are NCAA athletes as well as like next gen athletes. And then it gives people the opportunity to be like, hey, you're 17. You want to go play NCAA? Go talk to Maya McNabney, who's like one of my assistants. Mm -hmm. Okay, Maya, you want to be in on the national team? Go talk to Maria Lex, right? Like, I think in Canada, we need to have a little bit more conversations about how to get to places. Mm -hmm. And I was, again, really fortunate to have really experienced partners to be able to help me through answering a lot of those questions. Um, So, yeah, it's just a program that's like high performance beach volleyball training, but also trying to build a little community of exceptional beach volleyball players in Canada. Very cool. And we're really prioritizing the men's side this year. Yeah. So that's why we brought on Jake and Aaron Chambers and Stephen Abrams. Like, awesome. it's we're gonna. There's a little bit of a gap that we're missing, yeah. and I'm I'm gonna be the one to try to fill it. <laughs> yeah. So alongside all these other coaches, well, Canadian women, y'all been holding the torch for a while. I mean, yeah, it's whew. gonna it's only gonna be up there for a little bit longer though. <laughs> 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 like maybe <laughs> just because there is there is a little bit of a gap um, age wise. I think yeah. in like what the next level of athlete is yeah maybe not maybe somebody will come out of the woodworks we'll find another unicorn i don't know yeah but yeah a couple of these unicorns are going to be done soon (laughs) (laughs) where can people follow along you and your many journeys that you're going to be having this year um probably just instagram to be honest okay if that works in all the countries that we travel to but yeah i would say there and then you got a website for the academy yes the northern elite.com northern elite.com that's a cool name too thanks thank you yeah, yeah. Our, um, a lot of people get surprised by the like logo of it. So it's I call it NTE, essentially. And people are like, well, why is it not TNE if it's the Northern Elite? And I was like, guys, it looks like a podium. <laughs> if you like, look at my logo, it, like, oh. it's supposed to be a podium. Oh, Funny okay. enough. So I like that. yeah, it's not TNE, everyone. <laughs> I was like doing the, the image yeah. in my head. Yeah. That's sweet. Once you see it, you'll be like, oh, okay, she kind of tried. Nicolette actually helped me with the logo. Mm. Oh, she's awesome. She created it for me. Yeah. I called her one day. I was like, hey, I need a logo ASAP. She made it for me in like five minutes. <laughs> of course she did. Because she's exceptional. So, <laughs> yeah, <she did> <laughs> yeah. Well, so great to have you in. Yeah, thanks um, for having me. We'll be seeing a lot of you on the road. Yep. So we'll, yeah. Uh, we'll Bring a couple of these. Swap. Yeah, <laughs> there. Bring some mics on the road. Seriously. See you at the buffets. <laughs> oh my Same gosh. buffet every day over and over. You want to have some more chicken and rice? <laughs> yes. Hopefully. Hopefully, yeah. Right. Yeah, usually we're like praying for just some clean chicken and oh, rice. Oh, yeah, maybe not the chicken. But yeah. <laughs> depending, on what, depending on where we are. Yeah. Well, good luck this year. Thank you. Uh, you guys too. Thank you. Yeah. from afar. Yes. And sometimes rooting in person. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yep. Yeah. Amazing. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks, Sophie. Appreciate Shoots. it. Yeah. Shoots.